Hey guys, it's Sarah Sims, and today we're going to be talking about the Wilsonoff Legacy and what the Legacy Challenge is in general. Basically, I'll be going through all the rules of the Basic Legacy Challenge, the different variations, and how I'm going to be running this particular series. I'm sure a lot of you already know about the Legacy Challenge and all the different parts of it, but I thought I'd make it for those of you who are a bit rusty or aren't familiar with it. So, um, if you didn't see already, I posted a video yesterday of the cast for our founder, Everly Wilsonoff. So if you haven't seen that, I recommend checking it out, and there's a link to that in the description. Okay, so now that we've gotten that stuff out of the way, let's jump into the challenge. So the Legacy Challenge has been a super duper popular challenge since The Sims 1. And it's been changed and improved over the years, and each version of The Sims has brought its own kind of challenges to the challenge. Um, so all of the information that I'm going to be spewing at you today comes directly from simslegacychallenge.com. There's a link for that in the description as well. Um, and they have full guides to all of The Sims game variations, so Sims 1, 2, 3, and 4, and how to create a legacy challenge in each one. So I'm going to be focusing on The Sims 4 today since that's what I'm playing, but please feel free to read up on the other challenges if it's all new to you or if you are a Sims 3 person or whatever it is that you might want to do that for. So what is the legacy challenge? Essentially, it's a list of restrictions you can place on yourself as a simmer to make the game more difficult. So you start a brand new game with a one sim family and that is going to be your founder. The goal is to have your founder start from basically nothing and get through 10 generations of sims without breaking any of the rules, fulfilling each of the generational requirements, etc, etc. So the founder has to be a young adult but you otherwise have free reign to customize them in whatever way you want. You can use copious amounts of custom content, you can make them aliens, or do whatever it is you want to make the perfect sim for your legacy. One thing to keep in mind is that every generation will have the same last name as your founder, so you want to make sure that you like it enough so that you can get through the challenge and not want to kill yourself. I'm kidding. but. Make it a good name. Make it something that is funny or beautiful or reflective of you or something. Or make it yourself. You're used to your own name. You're probably not going to get sick of it at the end of a legacy, you know? Um, but as you know, our legacy will be Wilsonoff, which I am just very amused by. So we'll see if I get sick of it by the end of the challenge. Um, so after you've created your founder, you'll have to move your sim into an empty 50 by 50 lot and there are only a few in The Sims 4. I think there are only two that I can think of, but I might be wrong. Um, but it's going to cost you 10,000 simoleons and once you're on the lot, you have to buy the knight of the octagon table suit of armor. It's like a suit of armor, it's in the decoration. Um, category and it's $8,200 or simoleons or whatever and you're gonna place it in your household inventory and you're gonna keep it there for the whole challenge and you can't sell it until the challenge is over so kind of think of it as a symbol and a reminder of how royal you are with your legacy oh there's heirs and there's a reigning heir and maybe they're the king or the queen or whatever that's how I always kind of have thought about it um, but yeah, you're gonna have the 5550 lot, so that's 10,000, and you're gonna buy the suit of armor for 8,200. So before you jump into the gameplay though, you're gonna have to make a few decisions. So the first thing you have to do is pick your secession laws. So before the founder or the reigning heir dies, the new heir must be selected. There are four laws that you can use to help you determine who the heir will be. So the first one is the gender law, and it determines who can actually become the heir. So you have three different categories, matriarchy, patriarchy, and equality, and they each have two degrees of intensity, standard and strict. So matriarchy only permits female sims to become the heir, and patriarchy only permits male sims to become the heir. And equality, you can be whatever gender you want doesn't matter. 
So the standard law for each of these categories is less definitive. So for example, if you have like a standard matriarchy, um, that would state that any available female sim is eligible to become an heir. But if there isn't a female offspring available, then the heir could be a boy or any other gender. So in a strict matriarchy, the difference would be only female sims can become the heir, and if there isn't a female heir, then the legacy just like can't continue. You have to have a female heir. It's very strict. And the opposite would be true of a standard and strict patriarchy, respectively. But the equality category is a little different, so the standard equality, any child of the founder or reigning heir is eligible to become the next heir. In a strict equality, each generation has to alternate between a male and a female. So your, if your founder is a female, then the heir must be a male, and then their heir must be a female, and that keeps going on and on and on. For my legacy, I'm going to be implementing a standard equality. So anyone, regardless of gender, regardless of what generation we're on, is able to be the heir. So that is not a factor for me. The next law is the bloodline law, and this also helps determine eligibility. Again, there are three categories in this, traditional, modern, and foster. So traditional law states that only natural born children can be an heir. Modern law permits natural born and adopted can be an heir, and foster law only allows adopted children to be an heir. So traditional and modern both have two degrees of intensity, like the gender law, so they have standard and strict. So, for example, the standard fostered law would state that an adopted child is preferred to be the heir, but if there weren't an adopted child, the natural born could be chosen. A strict foster law would pro prohibit any natural born child from ever being the heir, and if the reigning heir didn't adopt a child, the legacy wouldn't be able to continue. Um, and the opposite would be true for um, the traditional laws as well. For the Lusanoff legacy, we'll be going with the modern law, so both natural born and adopted children can't be heirs. <sighs> okay, so the heir law, which is next, decides if there is more than one eligible child, like who is going to be the heir. You can simply go with like the first or the last born if you want it just to be simple and clean cut. You don't really want to think about it too much. It's always going to be first or last born, however you want to do it. Um, you could also choose to go with the living will, meaning that the child with the best relationship with the reigning heir would become the next heir. Um, Another option is merit, so um, merit is determined by selecting the child with the most fully completed aspiration, so whoever is the furthest along or has the most aspirations completed. Um, strength is a twist on the basic, basic firstborn law, but it provides an opportunity for any sibling to fight them for the title, so if they win the fight they can take the title from them. And this can go on for a while, or as frequently as possible, until the reigning heir is deceased and this, that next generation that was fighting has to select an heir. So whoever is reigning at that point would then be the, the reigning heir. So um, You can also randomly select the heir, so using a die or some kind of random generator sort of thing. Um, you can also have an exemplar law by naming a single trait that your founder has at the beginning of the challenge, so then any eligible heir with that trait would automatically become the heir, and then if no child has that trait, you can just defer back to the firstborn natural law. Um, another option is democracy. Um, you can really only do this if you have like a let's play or a live stream or a blog like on Tumblr or something. Um, or any other place where you can publicly share your legacy with other people. So it's like based on comments or polls and likes and dislikes. Um, the viewers or the readers would select who the next heir would be. I would like to do a democracy for the legacy challenge if you guys are okay with that. Um, I think it'd be a lot of fun and it's a great way for everyone to get involved. Um, any ties could be broken by um, doing a random number generator between like if there were two then we could do that um, or if there were only two available and there was still a tie then we could do a random number generator. Otherwise we could just go to firstborn. So I'm kind of 
open to whatever you guys are thinking so comment down below let me know what you would like me to do with that um so after that um oh one more law we have the species law um this only applies to simmers with the get to work expansion pack but essentially you can decide if you want a xenarchy where the air alternates between human and alien in each generation, so human, alien, human, alien. Uh, xenophobic would mean that the heirs must be the same species as the founder, so it could be alien or human as long as that's what the founder was. Uh, Brood states that heirs must be naturally born by the reigning heir regardless of gender, so that they can become the next heir. So. That just means that a male sim who was the reigning heir would have to become pregnant by an alien in order to produce an heir. Um, and then the last option for the species law is tolerant, where the species doesn't matter. And we will be going with that one. Okay. <sighs> now on to the rules. Everyone okay? Take a breather? Alright. We're, we're, we're gonna get through this. We're almost there. So, um, there are 10 major rules that you'll need to follow throughout the duration of the challenge. Number one, there are no cheats, hacks, or mods that give you an advantage over someone who did not use them. So no money cheats, setting skill or career levels, etc. So like, you could use like custom content or like move objects on because that doesn't make the challenge any easier for you. It just makes it look prettier. Um, I personally am going to refrain from using like cast to like edit Sims like physical features because I think that that's kind of part of the challenge. Finding an attractive suitor for your heir. Um, I think is a lot of fun and trying to make sure that their genetics aren't totally screwed up can be a challenge so um, that's not something that's explicitly stated in the rules anywhere that's just something I like to do personally um, but yeah no cheats so no money cheats no mother load or um, anything like that um, number two no restarting after bad events. So if your sim dies, gets fired, if you got the wrong gendered child, it is too bad. Like, too bad. You have to live with that. The only exception, of course, is if your game crashes and if there's a like technological error, then that's okay. That's alright. But like, you don't, you can't just restart start it. It has to be... If, if you get an unlucky card, you have to live with it. That, that's how it is, unfortunately. Okay, so number three, you cannot move a sim into the legacy family unless they are a spouse of one of the children. So you can have spouses for the spares, like the non-heir children if you want, and they can have children too, but if you move the spare children out of the legacy family, they can't come back ever. So really think about it before you move them out. Um, number four, the legacy family must remain on the same lot for the duration of the challenge. So you can grab rooms and houses off of the exchange as long as you pay for them or whatever, but you can't move off of that 50 by 50 lot. Uh, number five, a sim can only use one anti-aging item in their lifetime. So that's like one youth potion or one cow plant milk thing. Um, and you can't use any cheats that freeze or lengthen or shorten the lifespan. The lifespan settings like in your game settings should be on normal. So you're not gonna have like a long or a short lifespan. You have to have it on the standard normal setting. Number six, you may not change a sim's current aspiration. The only way to do that is if you complete the one they have and then you can select a new one for them to conquer, you know. Like, oh, that's cool, I found my soulmate and now I'm happy. I'm gonna work on having a big happy family now. So that's just um, an example. Um, but yeah, feel free to tackle more than one, but you have to finish the one you had first. Number seven, you cannot bring a sim back from the dead. 
Um, you can plead with the Grim Reaper if you want, um, but you can't use Ambrosia or that fancy Book of Life thing, and once they're gone, they're gone. Ghosts are kind of a different thing. You can add a ghost to your family, but they can't actually earn you any money. You can't use them to earn points um, for the Legacy Challenge, which we'll kind of get into in a little bit. Um, so they can't actually help you progress at all. You can have them there if you just are emotionally attached to them, but they can't really help you with your, with your challenge at all. Um, number eight, you cannot move out the Sim who is the reigning heir. The spares can be moved out, but once a child is moved out, they cannot become the heir. Even if conditions change that make them the rightful heir, they can't do it. So once you move someone out, that's it. They can't come back, they can't be the heir. Like that, that's it. The heir has to be on the legacy family land plot. So the 50 by 50 lot you get at the beginning. Okay. Number nine, your family is the only family that you can play in that save file. So you can't go playing around with other families, switching things around all willy-nilly. Don't go make the goths all screwed up and add another kid or um, whatever. Or add your own sims in there so um, your legacy sim can marry someone else. It has to be someone who's already in the world. You can't change anything. So it, only your family has changed. Um, number 10, you are allowed to follow sims to their get to the work career, so like doctor, detective, or scientist. I'm not really sure why you wouldn't be able to, but in case there was a confusion about this, you can, so that's cool. Um, okay, so those are the rules. A few other things. In order to make things fair for the, um... I guess the genetic aspect of this legacy challenge, um, there is a cha trait generator. Trait generator. Ugh, sorry about that. Um, but there's a trait generator on the simslegacychallenge.com website, um, link in the description, and it's super neat. You just put the two parents' traits into it, and it tells you the traits that the child will have. And it's random, and it can change each time, but there are certain traits that a child can have based on their parents' own traits. So it's kind of like a real life thing. So, cause like we do get some of our personality traits from our parents. So I think that's really cool. Um, I will be using this throughout the challenge. Um, and I'm also going to be scoring throughout the challenge. This is like a somewhat optional component, but I mean, it's a pretty large thing, but I do know people who don't always do the scoring. But Essentially, you get points for every crazy cool thing that you're able to accomplish, um, and there are points you can earn for having, like, a well-rounded legacy family. So, um, some of them are per generation, you have to do this every time, and other things are like a one-time accomplishment, but they're each housed under one of the ten aspirations categories. So, like, family, creative, fortune, love, knowledge, athletic, nature, food, popularity, and deviance. So you kind of have all of those different ones. Um, there are also handicaps and penalties, so you can be rewarded or punished for good and bad behavior. So that's really cool too. Um, I will be keeping tally of this on a Google spreadsheet. I am the only one who can edit it, but anyone can view it. So if you want to check that out, there is a link in the description for that as well. So if you're interested, check it out. Um, but yeah, that is the Legacy Challenge. Um, if you want some more information about it, please, please, please check out simslegacychallenge.com. It's where I got all my information, and they have a lot of great resources, so many, many, many thanks to them. Um, check out all the links in the description if there was anything you wanted to check out. Um, I hope this helped you guys understand it if you were a little fuzzy on the details. Um, if you like this, then, and you want to see the legacy challenge that I'm starting, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting the first episode in the next day or so, so um, that's going to be really cool. Um, I'm going to post videos at least once a week, if not more. Um, I'm still kind of getting into my summer schedule, so we'll kind of see how that goes, but it'll be at least once a week. <sighs> okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. Bye!